Hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Chemila Iwebilem, and we're here for the movie review of Overcomer. So, Overcomer is the story about a young girl, Hannah Scott, that was uh, she usually stole. She just enjoyed taking things that didn't belong to her, and she lived with her grandmother. And she was just recently enrolled in Brookshire Christian School, where she was going to take part in cross country. Cross country is like a something you call an endurance race. So not the normal 100 meters, 400 meters, but like three miles. So Hannah Scott was going to run for her school. She was the only one in her team. And she had the privilege of a wonderful coach who, together with his wife and children, were very supportive of her and they gave her all the moral support that she needed. So Hannah Scott had been told by her grandmother that her parents died, but Hannah Scott didn't know that her father was actually alive, but her mom had passed. When she eventually got to, and for just by chance or by coincidence, her coach got to meet her father who was in the hospital and was nearly at the point of death and was able to connect them together. So for me, um, Overcoma is a story of redemption, forgiveness, love, and identification. So I'll take it one after the other. Forgiveness. Hannah was able to experience forgiveness because she had to forgive her grandmother who had practically lied to her, even though it was to protect her, so to speak. And so she had to forgive her father also, who left her 15 years ago and just ran off and didn't bother about her any longer. She also, so as she, even before she forgave those people, she already experienced forgiveness from God. Yes, because God always forgives us of our sins at each and every point in time. So Hannah got to forgive and then move on with her life and even perform excellently well. And that forgiveness resulted in her performing excellently in her cross-country race. So redemption, as I said in the introduction, Hannah used to steal. She like used to, <laughs> she really used to steal. Hi, Victoria. Nice. Uh, hi, Kemi. Nice to see you. So she really used to steal. And it was a, a it was a problem because uh, in the beginning, her grandmother found something like, I think it was an MP3 player and asked her, oh, where did you get this from? And she was like, I found it. And her grandma was like, return it because I already bought one of these for you. And she was like, okay. But she just, and you could see that she had a stash of different things, headsets, money, different things that she had just picked up. So even on the first, the first um, cross country um, tryout that she had the coach and his wife was there and their son, coach couldn't find his wristwatch, coach John Harrison couldn't find his wristwatch. And he was like, did I leave my wristwatch at home or did I bring it here and take it off? And later we saw that Hannah was able to engage in restitution. Restitution is when you've taken something that doesn't belong to you or you've done something that was not right, how you try to return yourself or return the person that you've hurt to the former place where they have been. So for example, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector in the Bible and many people knew, oh, hello, Mustafa Halima. Nice to see you here. So many people knew Zacchaeus as a, more than just a tax collector, they knew him as a, as a thief. And Zacchaeus was able to, when he met Jesus and his life literally turned around, yes, he promised that he was going to return everything that he had taken up to four times the value. So imagine if we have Zacchaeus right now and Zacchaeus um, took, say, 100 naira from me forcefully or by threat or anything 
And then when he now experienced, when he met Jesus, he now got to say, okay, I'm going to return four times the value of what I've taken from everybody. And he has taken 100 naira from me. So that means he'll be taking 400, he'll be returning 400 naira back to me. Wow, that's, <laughs> that seems like a huge investment. But yes, that's what restitution does. So we saw that Hannah, after she experienced Jesus, she began to return the things that she had stolen. We saw the heads, the um, students that play basketball, that she took his headset. She returned it. She even added it and she apologized. She didn't just return it and say, oh, okay, here's your headset. Even as well, um, Coach Harrison's wristwatch that she took, she returned it and they even hugged and embraced each other, as well as other people that she had picked up one thing or the other from. She added a note to um, the items that she was returning them. So she did carry on restitution. She did not just say, "Oh, okay, I've done this thing. Doesn't mean doesn't matter. I won't I won't do it again. But at the same time, I won't return it. That's not how it's supposed to be. So as children, whenever you take anything that doesn't belong, to, in fact, don't even take anything that doesn't belong to you to start with. But if you've taken anything that belongs to someone else, I mean along the way please do find a place to forgive yourself yes and return that item return that thing or apologize don't just shove it and say oh i'll go on in my life like that i mean jesus has forgiven me so i can continue please don't do that so make sure you make sure you carry out restitution and hannah found love love is Love is really important in as, as children of God. I don't think there's anyone who de doesn't deserve love, nobody at all. So we must be able to show love to other people. If Coach Harrison and his wife Amy and just two sons didn't open their hearts up to, uh, up to Hannah, she would probably have just, uh, I'm just doing this cross country because that's the only thing I enjoy doing. And we saw that over time, Hannah didn't only know how to do cross country. She also knew how to do spoken word. You, if you you see where she walked into the, um, I, I think it was like their theater room and the way she gave an outstanding performance and everybody was like, oh, wow. Yes, because that is, that is what you, that's what you get from when you come out of your shell. So another thing is, identification okay before identification let me do redemption so hannah was redeemed she wasn't just redeemed by god she was redeemed and then she found love in her redemption so it was so beautiful to see her being accepted to see people cheering her on when when she was about to take one of the races they're like oh go hannah scott go hannah scott you can do this that was that was love right there that was, um, yes, that was redemption. Because I'm very sure Hannah wasn't used to those things. So you must be able to share love with one another. You must be able to show other people love. There are some people in your schools. There are some people in your environment or houses that maybe they're very shy and they just want to observe. They just want to be on their own. Sure, take and take, stretch out your hand. <laughs> stretch out your hand show love to them just talk to them oh what can i help you do oh what do you need help with oh what do you need explanation for just show love to that person and you see that that person would actually come out of their shell and you say oh wow so you actually can't talk you actually can't do all these things you've just been quiet all the while so show love to people that are around you another thing was identification if you see at some point in the movie after Hannah had the conversation with Ms. Brooks and she gave her life to Christ. She got to read Ephesians 2. If you look at Ephesians 2, you see that there were key things that Hannah picked out from there. It was, there was, um, there was, I'm loved. There was, I'm chosen. There was, I'm redeemed. There was, I'm forgiven. Those are the kind of things that you experience only when you know your identity. It's just like, how I know that I'm Chiemela because when I was younger, 
people always called me Chimela. My parents called me Chimela. My siblings called me Chimela. And so I grew up knowing that, oh, yes, I can be identified as Chimela. So that's the same way. You'll be identified with what you've constantly known. So don't be, don't be identified as a bully. Don't be identified as a wicked person. Don't be identified as a selfish person. Don't be identified as someone who uh, nobody wants to play with you because you are mean. Those are bad identification methods. For example, Hannah could have been identified as a thief in the beginning. When you saw your property, ah, she steals. Yes, thief. So you could have said, ah, Hannah is a thief. But now we don't, we don't, we can't um, put Hannah and thief in the same sentence because that's not who she is any longer. So you must choose what you want to be identified as. I would choose, I would tell you to choose to be identified as redeemed, as loved, as chosen, as forgiving, as joyful, as grateful, as happy. Those are things to be identified with. When you can, when you can readily identify with good qualities, other people too will be able to identify with those good qualities in you. So it is whatever, whatever you call yourself, that's what other people are going to call you. So please don't be dampened if you think someone has called you a bad name or someone has said something bad about you or someone has described you in a very bad light. Don't think about it in that way. Think about it. Choose to identify yourself in the way Jesus has identified you and choose to identify yourself with things that you want. So if you want good things, identify yourself with good things and don't do bad things. So it doesn't seem like you are, you are living a two shaded life. If you if you are going to identify yourself like this, maintain yourself as this. If you're going to identify yourself as this, maintain yourself as this. So if you identify yourself as good, maintain yourself as good. And make sure that people around you get to see it, get to experience it, get to experience, oh my God, it's so nice talking to you. Oh my God, it's I, I feel so I feel so glad that I found a friend in you. Oh my, I can't believe that I missed out on you all my life. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. So you see that when Hannah got to meet her father, eventually in the end, it felt like, wow, like I've lost 15 years. Her father felt like, oh, he has lost 15 years with his daughter. And she also felt like she had lost 15 years with her father. But now all that was restored because you saw that they had a budding relationship. And even before he died, he had prepared records for her so that she could listen to them on her birthdays as years came by. So that was really beautiful. So it just felt like 15 years had been collapsed. And then she got to, they both got to enjoy quality time with each other. And that was, that was beyond wonderful. So I want to talk about the role of her grandma. Her grandma really tried to do all the wonderful things that she thought, oh yes, protecting Hannah because her father was a bad person. He made her, he made her, um, he led her mom into drugs. Oh, that was good enough. But if her grandma had forgiven her father a long time ago, it would have been so good for each and every one of them. It would have been perfect because they would have gotten to say, oh, well, maybe Hannah would have had more time with her father. So please don't hold back forgiveness, even if someone has hurt you. It's okay to be hurt. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. But please don't hold yourself back and say, oh, I'm not going to forgive that person. No, do you know what that person said about me? Don't hold back. Rather, open your heart up and say, I forgive you and move on. And you see that life is much more better when you forgive people, when you forgive those that hurt you and apologize, when you forgive those that hurt you and don't even care at all. Forgive and move on. So forgiveness is really key. It's really, really key. Another thing I want to share is persistence. So earlier, um, at the beginning of the movie, we saw how many people had to leave um, Franklin Town because a major manufacturing company was closing down. And so most of the people on the basketball team had to leave. Coach Harrison could have just as well given up and said, okay, I'm going to just stay and be teaching. Anything they tell me to do, I'll do, but I'm not interested in any other thing. But when um, Miss Olivia Brooks gave Coach Harrison the role to take cross country, 
it was actually it was actually strange because cross country wasn't his thing you saw even the time when he said he was going to run and he did um he was supposed he said he was i was going to he was going to run it in 24 minutes and he ended up not doing it <laughs> in like till like 32 minutes but then he didn't give up there he continued and said oh okay even if it's just one person it was difficult because imagine you saying okay yeah are used to basketball basketball is like an a game kind of um sports so you're yeah, used to basketball and all of a sudden you just go hmm, down ah it's it can be so heartbreaking but he didn't say okay i'm not going to be serious with this cross country i'll just abandon it no he actually focused on it and he gave his best into it and if he didn't give his best into it he would not hannah hannah scott would not have won that race because we saw how it was from his role as a coach to his role as a friend linking up hannah and her father to then getting the record that hannah could listen to while she ran the race and that was that was essentially what gave her the um spotlight so to speak so imagine her beating people that had been in um, cross country for years that had gone on to do greater competitions so you have to be persistent it is not always going to it's not always going to come out as you see it. Sometimes you may just really think, oh, I have this imagination. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. But sometimes life is not always that way. It may not always come out as you plan. But what, what happens when you get lemons? You make lemonade out of it. So don't, don't sit in your comfort zone and say, okay, this thing didn't work out. I'm just, I'm going to abandon it. No, put your mind to it. Try and try and try. And you eventually get it, and you'll be happy that you actually tried. So that's these are these are key things that we learned from the movie Overcomer. And there is no challenge. There's nothing that is too difficult for you to do. Anything you see that oh, that ordinarily looks difficult on the out on the outside of it, you say no. I'm going to do this. Thing. I'm going to conquer it. I'm going to do it well. That should be your aim. That should be your purpose. That should be your drive. Don't always let people tell you, oh, this thing's too difficult for you to do. You can't do it. No, go ahead and do it. That's why we're so, we're so glad to see everything that's happening at Switch Summer Camp this year, especially since it's a virtual event. The, everything that the children have been doing, children and teenagers have been doing from the um, stand against violence to the tissue challenge, to the cooking and even to the movie review, you guys have brought out innovative ways to do things. Even as even as it seems like we've been in a box throughout 2020, you guys have actually come out of the box and shown us different ways to do things. And that's what you should, that's what you should hold on to each and every time in life. So I just like to ask if there are any questions, if there's anybody that has a question, I'll also check on to see any of the reviews that I've received recently. So we saw, so different people have shared their reviews on what they learned from the movie and it's great to see people, people like the movie. I'll just read out Finn says, Thomas Hill is my favorite character because in the past he did bad things and hurt others. He gave his life to God and believed in God when he lost his sight and was sick. He introduced God into Jack Harrison's life. Well, Jack Harrison was already a Christian, but yes, Thomas Hill actually, he didn't um, lean on his past. He didn't say he was going to remain in that place. He actually followed through with God even to the very end. And that's essential for what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be only Christians in a season or Christians in a time. We're supposed to be Christians following God through and through every time. And so I learned that in tough times, we should always have faith in God and believe, even when there seems to be no hope. And that we should preach the gospel to everyone. Yes, please preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Many start to each and every person as you can. And you don't only preach the gospel by... saying gospel you see the way um john harrison's life and his wife their lives preached the gospel 
So even if maybe Hannah didn't want to, she wasn't interested. Those are those those were good examples for her. So that's what that's what we should be. So I'll just look through another person's. Yes, we must not forget. Nicola said, Dear Father, help me to never forget to turn to you even in storms. Amen. Yes, there will be a lot of storms in life. There will be a lot of storms. But you must always remember to lean on God. Always turn to God at each and every point in time. And focus on him. That, that is... That is... That's very important. We must always rely on God to help us at each and every point in time. And uh, Kemi said, Father, make me to meet the person that will make me successful. Yes, Hannah Scott actually got to meet the right person. It was, I mean, everything that happened seemed like a coincidence, but it was, they were the right people. John and Amy Harrison, they were the right people. Because if peradventure she said she wasn't going to run cross country or if john never went to um, the hospital that day with the pastor they would never have met they would never have their um, hannah and her father would never have met and he would have just died and hannah would have lost out on that opportunity so it's very important that we get to meet the right people at each and every point in time so thank you guys so much let us just say a word of prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the blessing of your word. Thank you for everything that we've learned from the movie of Akoma. Thank you, Lord, even for Switch Summer Camp. Thank you for this interaction that we have with one another and everything we're able to learn. We pray, O oh Lord, that even as we go on in life, that you help us not to stray away from you, that we will continue to remain your children forever and ever. Help us, O oh Lord, to walk in accordance for your will, for our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We are so happy to have you guys. And it's been a fun virtual event. It's been really fun. I never thought a, a virtual event would come out so fun. But I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves and we'll continue on our group chat. See you guys. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.